Though most of the Union uniforms in the Civil War look the same as the next guy, there's actually a lot more to the individual uniforms than one would think. Let's get right into it. In this video, I will be using the 1861 uniform regulations as they were revised due to the start of the war. I'm going to go over each individual uniform garment and how it differed based on rank. I will not be going over any sort of rank insignia, as that will be discussed in a different video. The following is what will be discussed. Frock coats, trousers, notice the spelling, caps, boots, sashes, and other miscellaneous items. So let's get right into it. We're going to start with the frock coats. Both enlisted and officers wore some version of a frock coat. The enlisted version of this coat differed based on what regiment they were in. So the enlisted footmen, which are your standard infantry, artillery, and some others, wore a single-breasted frock coat of dark blue cloth, without plates, and the skirt of the coat extended to one half the distance between their hip and their knees. It had a stand-up collar that wasn't quite long enough to restrict the next movement, and sloped up and backwards at a 30-degree angle on each side. The coat itself contained one row of nine buttons. Their cuffs contained two small buttons and an edged based on their unit. Scarlet for artillery, sky blue for infantry, yellow for engineers, crimson for ordnance and hospital stewards, and there were pockets within the folds of the skirt. The cavalry and light artillery jacket for the enlister differed in some aspects. Instead of a frock coat, they wore a uniform jacket. Differences include that instead of nine buttons, they would have one row of twelve buttons. The jacket only extended to the waist, and the cuffs utilized colors as well, with the cavalry being yellow and the light artillery being scarlet. They also had other miscellaneous dis button differences around the jacket. On all duty aspects, except for fatigue wear, the jackets are to be fully buttoned up. The fatigue dress, which is a uniform worn when an individual is engaging in battle, for the enlisted, was made up of a sack coat of dark blue flannel extending halfway down the thigh and made loose without sleeve or body lining, falling collar inside pocket on the left side, four coat, coat buttons down the front, and this was universal for all units. So let's move on to the officer frock coat. All officers wore a frock coat of blue cloth with a skirt extending between two-thirds and three-quarters of the way between the hips and the knees. Captains and lieutenants wore a single-breasted frock coat while all other officer ranks wore double-breasted frock coat. Captains, second lieutenants, brevet second lieutenants, and medical cadets all wore their coat with one row of nine buttons. Majors, lieutenant colonels, and colonels wore their coats with two rows of seven buttons. A brigadier general's coat had two rows of eight buttons in pairs. Their collars and cuffs were made of dark blue velvet, and they also had buttons in other areas of the frock coat. The major general's coat was the same as the Brigadier General's, except instead of eight buttons, they had nine buttons in groups of three. Let's discuss the trousers. For all enlisted, excluding men of the light artillery, their trousers consisted of a dark blue cloth. Sergeants wore it with a stripe of one and a half inches wide, corporals with a stripe of a half an inch wide, and privates did not have a stripe. Companies of light artillery would wear trousers of sky blue cloth that were loose fitting and spread well over the boots. Officer trousers were a bit varied from the enlisted trousers. Regimental officers wore trousers consisting of dark blue cloth with a welt let into the outer seam that contained a color based on their unit. General staff and staff corps officers wore trousers of dark blue cloth with a gold cord one eighth of an inch in diameter along the outer seam. This excludes ordnance officers. General officers and officers of the ordnance department wore plain trousers of dark blue cloth. Okay, we're going to talk about caps now. On the screen, you'll see measurements for the caps both enlisted and officers would wear. The enlisted wore stitching instead of binding around the edge, as you can see in the measurements. Medical cadets would wear forage caps. For fatigue purposes, forage caps of pattern in the QM's office, dark blue cloth with a welt of the same around the crown, and yellow metal letters in front to designate companies. Commissioned officers may wear forage caps of the same pattern, with the distinctive ornament, ornament of the corps and regiment in front. Okay, we'll talk about sashes now. General officers would wear a buff slick net sash that went around twice at the waist, tied behind the left hip, and the pendant part not to extend more than a foot and a half below the tie. Other officers, excluding the medical department, wore crimson silk net, 
while medical department officers wore an emerald green silk net. Sergeants, chief buglers, chief musicians, and stewards would wear a red worsted shash, sash with worsted bullion fringe ends to go twice around the waist and to tie hind the left hip. Pendant part not to extend more than 18 inches below the tie as well. The sash was worn at all times except when in fatigues, and officers of the day wore it across the body, scarf fashion, from the right soldier to the left side, instead of around the waist. Okay, let's move on to overcoats. Enlisted men of the Mountain Corps, Mounted Corps, excuse me, wore an overcoat of sky blue cloth, stand and fall collar, double breasted, and a cape to reach down to the cuff of the coat when the arm is extended, and to button all the way up. All other enlisted men wore a coat of sky blue cloth, stand up collar, single breasted, and a cape to reach down to the elbows when the arm is extended, and button all the way up. For cavalry, they would wear a gutta percha talma or cloak extending to the knee with long sleeves. Commissioned officers wore a cloak coat of dark blue cloth, closing by means of four buttons of black silk and loops of black silk cord down the breast. Officers wore an embroidered cuff with embroidery as follows. Second lieutenant and brevet second lieutenants wore no embroidery. A first lieutenant wore one braid and a single knot. A captain wore two braids and a single knot. A major three braids and a single knot. A lieutenant colonel four braids and a single knot. A colonel five braids and a single knot. And a general five braids and a double knot. Okay, let's go on to other items. A cravat. Officers would wear a black cravat that still allowed a tie to be visible at the opening of the collar and then enlisted personnel wore black leather cravat. So boots, all officers wore an ankle or Jefferson boot. Enlisted men of cavalry and light artillery wore ankle or Jefferson, rights and lefts according to pattern. And enlisted men of artillery, infantry, engineers, and ordnance wore Jefferson, rights and lefts according to pattern. Spurs for all mounted officers wore yellow metal or gilt, and all enlisted mounted men wore yellow metal according to pattern. That's going to do it for all of the items that a soldier would wear in 1861, according to the uniform regulations. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and looking at the pictures of the uniforms, and hope to see you again next time. Thank you.